this example we're looking at the analysis of a simple source and we're going to find enough information to create the Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. Now we'll look at both types of equivalent circuits because in analysing for one we have nearly enough information for the other and sometimes in analysing for one we have to find the information for the other first to find the information we want. There's only three things we need to, s to find. Well, we only need to find any two of these and we can derive the third one. So if we find the short circuit current at the output, the open circuit voltage and the network resistance, we can build both the Norton equivalent and the Thevenin equivalent. So we can build either one of those, whichever we want. Now we only need two the open circuit voltage and the network resistance for the Thevenin and we only need the short circuit current and the network resistance for the Norton but sometimes we can't find the one we want so if we can find the other two we can then derive the third. So here we're looking for the short circuit current in this example. If we put a short circuit there the, the resistance across the output is 0 ohms. The 50 ohms plays no part and if you want to analyse that, 50 ohms in parallel with 0 ohms is 0 ohms. So if you look at the equation for two resistors in parallel, 50 times 0 over 50 plus 0, 0 on 50 is 0. So we want to find the short circuit current. So now we've got a series resistance of 100 ohms and 0 ohms, giving us a total resistance of 100 ohms. We've got a 15 volt source, so we've got 15 volts over 100 ohms giving us 150 milliamps. So 150 milliamps is going to flow out of the source through the 100 ohm resistor and through the short circuit. Now if you're not sure that it actually will flow through the short circuit let's just do the maths using the current divider rule. So here's 150 milliamps flowing out and the current divider rule shows the 150 milliamps times the opposite resistor in the parallel network, in this case the 50 ohm over the sum of the resistors. So that's uh, total current times 50 over 50. Now 50 over 50 is just 1. So the short circuit current is the 150 milliamp current. So all of that current flows through the short circuit. If we look at the open circuit voltage, what we want to find here is the current round there. Now there's two resistors in series, the 100 ohm and the 50 ohm. Now we can ignore this junction here because no current is flowing out of it so we can treat these two as series resistors. So our total resistance here is 150 ohms and the current using Ohm's law if you look at the second bottom equation I equals V on R 15 volts over 150 ohms 100 milliamps. 100 milliamps will flow through that circuit and what we're interested in what voltage is developed across here now you realise we're talking about a voltage divider network here. We're trying to find the voltage across the, the resistor. So we use Ohm's law again. The voltage across resistor 2 is I times R2. It's 100 milliamps times 50 ohms, 5 volts. So the voltage across the output, the open circuit voltage, is 5 volts. Now we could go and analyse for the network resistance but we don't have to because we've got the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Now if we draw them on a graph like this with the open circuit voltage on the x-axis and the short circuit current on the y-axis, the load between is known as the load line and the slope of that line is minus 1 over R. Now if you look at it you realise of course that slope is rise over run and that's current over voltage in this case whereas resistance is voltage over current. So we just flip those numbers around 5 volts over 150 milliamps gives us a resistance of 33.3 ohms. That's the internal resistance of this network. Now we'll come back to this load line in a minute. So now we have the three numbers. The open circuit voltage, 5 volts, the short circuit current, 150 milliamp, and the internal resistance of 33.3 ohms. From this we can build either circuit. So on the left we've put the 5 volts as the voltage supply for the Thevenin circuit and the 33.3 ohms as the series resistance. 
On the right we've put the 150 milliamps as a current source and the 33.3 ohms as a parallel resistance. Now let's check the Thevenin circuit. If we were to measure the open circuit voltage we would see 5 volts. If we were to measure the short circuit current then we'd have 5 volts divided by 33.3 ohms recurring 150 milliamps. If we analyze the circuit on the right we can see straight away if we put a short circuit all the current will flow on the short circuit so our short circuit current is 150 milliamps. Our open circuit voltage is caused by the current source all the current flowing through the resistor so that's 150 milliamps through 33.3 ohms which is 5 volts. So both of these circuits have the same open circuit voltage and short circuit current as the circuit above. Now just a few words on the load line. Doesn't matter what resistance we put here as a load, the voltage and current associated with that load, the current through the load and the voltage across the load will intersect on the load line. So if we were drawing exactly 175 milliamps, we'd come out here and we intersect this line and we'd be exactly at 2.5 volts. If we were drawing 100 milliamps up here, we're two thirds of the way up, we'd hit this line and we'd be one third of the way up to 5 volts or about 1.67 volts. So it doesn't matter what the load is here, the voltage and current associated with that load will appear on this line. Now as you'll have learnt, if the load is exactly 33.3 ohms, then that point will give the maximum power transfer. So that's a simplified Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuit. We just had to find any two of those three items, short circuit current, open circuit voltage or the network resistance. Any two of those three allowed us to find the third and those three numbers together allow us to create both the Thevenin equivalent and the Norton equivalent.